Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good evening. Welcome to our next webinar series from the Department of Electrical and Electronic Faculty of Engineering and Good Environment. My name is Dr. Nurul Izzatul Akhmar, the lecturer of Electrical and Electronics. And with me today, we have our speaker, Professor Dr. Muhammad Taufik bin Isha, to share his experience in this webinar topic, Transform the Transformer, A New Way Forward. Okay, before we start the webinar, let me introduce our, spe our speaker's background. Okay, Professor Dr. Muhammad Taufik Ben Ishaq graduated with a bachelor's degree in electrical power engineering with honor in 2002. He received a scholarship from MARA to further his study in Master of Science Electrical Power Engineering at University of Manchester Institute of Science and Technology, United Kingdom in 2003. He then, he then obtained his master's degrees in electrical power engineering in 2004. In 2006, he received his PhD from the same university, now University of Manchester, United Kingdom, in the area of power transformer and obtained his PhD in the field electrical engineering in 2010. Professor Dr. Muhammad Taufik main research interests are in in-service aging of transformer insulation, condition monitoring, and asset management and alternative insulation materials for transformers. He is also interested in mainstream research such as nanotechnology, renewable energy, and high voltage engineering. His contribution to this research field is evidenced by his publications. Today, he has authored and co-authored more, more than 65 publications in international journals and conference proceedings or seminars, one book and two chapters in books. He is actively involved in three research projects, editor and reviewer for journals, research supervision and activities with completion five PhD, six master by research, and 15 master for mixed mode and coursework candidates and committee member of IEEE Dielectric and Insulation, IEEE, IET, IEEE Power Energy Society, and more. Professor Dr. Mama Taufik Isha has two inventions to be registered as Malaysian patents. Over the years, he has received numerous awards, among others, two gold medal at DSS 2019, gold medal at ITAC 2016, and silver medal at MTE 2020 from his research contribution. So, the topic for today's webinar will look at the progress of the insulation materials of transformer which could transform the transformer to be more sustainable and greener to environment. With further ado, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Muhammad Taufik Ben Isha to start his webinar. Thank you. Hi. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all the audience. Thank you for your time to listening uh, to my talk entitled Transform, Transform the Transformer a New Way Forward. So, first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Emma for interesting introductions. So, actually, my talk is uh, I would like to share what I'm, uh, what what are the research that are currently I'm involved in, especially in power transformer area. Right. So. <clears throat> So my presentation today, uh, I will begin with my talk with a, some brief uh, introduction of the power system network. So I will, uh, then I will explain about my main research area, uh, which is uh, related to the power transformer. And I divided my talk uh, today in two parts. The first one is 
uh, related to the dielectric insulation material, which I involved in started in this area, uh, research my in this area is uh, for the last 10 to 15 years ago. And why my second part of the presentation today or on my talk today is related to the electrical insulation paper, which is the, the solid insulation paper inside the transformer, <coughs> which is I'm currently involved. And then I will conclude my findings together with some recommendation, which might uh, which might uh, might be used for the industrial purposes. And last but not least, I will end my presentations by introducing some uh, my research group members and also uh, my research group and also my research group members. <coughs> so next. Okay, now let's begin. I think everyone is familiar for this kind of a uh, network. This is we call the power system network. And as you can see from the figure, this is how the electrical power being delivered to us as a customer. Okay, from <clears throat> we can say that the power system network is actually consists of three uh, systems, which is the first one is generation, second one is transmission, and the last one is distribution system. So the power plant or the generation parts is actually where we generate the electricity from the fuel. It's either we can use coal, water, natural gases, or sometimes we can use nuclear energy to, to produce the electricity. And this fuel is then being converted into the electrical by using the uh, generator. Okay. And then this power is actually step up using the step up transformer through the transmission line to transfer the, uh, the power from the generation side to the customer. So the transmission line for <coughs> Malaysia, the highest one is we having uh, at 500 kV. And this one is 400 kV is normally the highest voltage rating for UK. Actually. <coughs> and beside the 500 kV, we have 132 kV, 275 kV and also and the last one is 500 kV. This is this three rating is being used for Malaysia. And <clears throat> after the transmission line, normally we, we we connect the transmission line to the step down transformer, and then this step down transformer is uh, connected to the houses accordingly or to the factory according to the what kind of voltage that we we, we require. Why we require the high voltage? To transmit the power. Why we require 400 kV? Why we require 500 kV to transmit the power? It's actually related to the losses of the line. Meaning that the power losses, power being generated and the power receiving to the customer side is actually is not uh, equal. There, is, there are some losses occur uh, in between the generation and distribution uh, system, which is normally occur in transmission and also the distribution area. So <clears throat> to avoid to have a higher losses so we can actually the losses we can calculate using uh, the formula and uh, that normally we use is uh, the most formula uh, the most popular formula for electrical engineer is i square up the yeah? current square multiplied by the re the resistance of the cable any cable so the higher the current there will be the higher the losses and then how to to reduce the losses actually we sorry, we can control the the amount of current that flow through the transmission line so the resistance of the transmission line is fixed because the the the, the, the distance or the the distance of the transmission uh, cable is actually fixed then it fits normally the resistance of the cable is uh, also fixed so the only uh, variable that we can control the losses is actually the current. So <clears throat> another formula to calculate the power for AC system is we have a voltage multiplied by current multiplied by cos theta, which is the angle between voltage and current. <clears throat> so normally the cos theta is uh, we have a almost a phase for the transmission line. So uh, the power that we can transmit to the customer is actually uh, depends on the voltage level and also the current. So 
for this case, is the power is fixed. So the only variable that we can play around because we try to reduce the losses, it means that we will re reduce the current. So for this case, the current must be set at the lowest as possible. So since P is proportional to the voltage and also the current, when the current is lower, means that the voltage must be higher. So that's why we need to increase the voltage from the 12 kV at the uh, generation side to up 400 kV in order to reduce the current that flow through the transmission line so that we can have lower losses that been uh, that lower locus, uh, losses occur uh, through the transmission line all right another important thing is when we have small currents that we can use smaller cable to transmit the power that's a good thing when you have a smaller smaller cable meaning that you you do not need to have a very strong structure to support the, the cable however when you increase the voltage means that you need to have a very good clearance okay? clearance from the ground so the higher the voltage level means that you need to have the higher clearance or the larger clearance. that's why as you can see from the, uh, the transmission power the the higher the voltage level it means, means that you you will have the higher the power itself So what are interesting about uh, to increase the voltage and to reduce the voltage is one equipment or one item that's so important in the power system network, which, which is we call transformer. This is, uh, this is the area that my research uh, all about. Okay. So what is the transformer? Is it the transformer like a movie? like we have uh, in a movie no okay transformer we can what we can see is actually this is the real transformer if you have uh, the first time you can see the actual uh, real power transformer okay you have a small transformer inside any computers and so okay power transformer this is we call power transformer is a one of the important parts or component in power system network without the power power transformer we cannot transmit the power from longer distance okay so in Malaysia, actually alone, there are 70,000 distribution transformers uh, in 2000, uh, in, if not I'm mistaken, I'm mistaken, it's in 2015, we have 70,000 distribution transformers during that time. So now you can imagine, it's now, nowadays it's 2021, so maybe the, the numbers of distribution transformers will increase due to uh, the, increasing, uh, the increasing of the uh, numbers of the houses and so on. Right. <clears throat> okay. Let's go into the more deeper to the parts of the transformer. What are the main parts of the transformer? As you can see here, we have a uh, bushing. Bushing of the transformer is actually located at the top of the transformer, where this bushing work as a jet distance between the transformer tank with the light wire from the transmission line okay then we, we have a bushing and then we have conservator and in this conservator is actually located where the excess of oil uh, of the transformer will flow okay and we have a radiator of the transformer to cool the transformer we have the most important part is a winding transformer winding include the paper insulation that wind the transformer and inside the transformer tank normally we have typically transformer oil uh, function is to cool the transformer as well as to give the uh, insulation between the electrical part and the ground the grounding of the uh, transformer okay <clears throat> so for example here if you have a typical 600 MBA transformer, okay, 600 MBA transformer, normally it's contained 12 tons of paper, okay, with the thickness between 30 to 100 micrometers okay, uh, of the thickness, and the density is between 0 0.7, 0 0.8 gram per centimeter uh, cube. And then inside that particular transformer, we can have 45 tons or 45,000 liter of oil. So how you, you can imagine that? how much the uh, the oil 
or we can say the liquid that we use inside the transformer as well as the vapor or solid insulation inside the transformer quite a lot right so <clears throat> the the insulation of the transformer that like i said is we have liquid parts and also the solid parts and the liquid parts normally we the common type of insulation liquid uh, that used for today markets is actually the mineral oil and we also have a silicon type of oil and we have a synthetic ester and also the natural ester so each of these fluids actually have their own unique physical and also uh, insulating properties which determine their use okay so <clears throat> however most of the transformer in the world actually use the mineral oil as a dr liquid insulation and last in the last 10 years or maybe in the last uh, 15 years nowadays most of the companies uh, around the world especially the utilities company like tmb and whatever uh, we have a straw energy and also uh, some electricity they try to tend to investigate uh, an alternative oil in order to actually in order to comply the regulations the regulations set by the government we will look, we will look at uh, in depth later on and then beside the liquid like i said we have a solid insulation and the solid insulation in the transformer can be divided into a uh, major and minor insulation structure sorry and the major insulation structures are, or we can the major insulation inside the transformer is we can say as a barrier spacer and also the clamp upon uh, the different is a we call the press board while the minor insulation consists of winding insulation paper okay along okay the cellulite transform okay this the function of the solid insulation is actually to serve as insulation electrical insulation okay the second one is to give the support for the winding okay? this solid insulation inside the transformer <clears throat> so we go the first part is a uh, dielectric uh, installations so as i mentioned earlier the dielectric uh, dielectric liquid or we can say that the liquid insulation inside the transformer is being used as a three uh, <clears throat> Three important, uh, uh, what we can say, three important. Uh, okay, use or uh, function. Okay, three important function. The first one is to give the electrical insulation, or we can say that protection in high voltage system, and the second one is to cool the winding of the transformer. Okay, and nowadays with the, with the latest technology, we can use the oil inside the transformer or the liquid inside the transformer to give the information about the health of the transformer so the dielectric dielectric liquid inside the transformer works as three function first is the electric insulation second is a cooling medium to cool the transformer and the last one is an information carried to the uh, maintenance engineer <coughs> and So typical insulation liquid that normally we use here is actually metallic mineral oil, or you can say it is based on petroleum. Okay, this is the common <coughs> mineral oil that we use inside the transformer. <coughs> so mineral oil is a popular why because its availability, okay, easy to get easy to obtain the second one is due to the low cost okay and the most important thing the mineral oil is being an excellent dielectric and also the cooling medium until now so there are reasons why we should be seriously thinking of alternative of insulating liquid First one, okay. First, 
Firstly, the petroleum products are actually going to run out in the future. Okay, there will be serious shortage, even is is occur in the mid 20 21st century. The second one is the transformer oil is when you use the mineral oil, it's actually is a poorly biodegradable. So if you if you have a spill occur, okay, if you have a serious spills occur during the installation or during the transformer um, blow or fire, it could heavily contaminates our soil or waterway okay, or river. Okay. And for your information, thousands of the trans transformers is actually are located in the populated area. If you can be list in every in air in every section or in area in every area in our house is actually we have one sub, uh, substation transformer or distribution transformer. And is it can cause the issue of fire. Okay, when when anything uh, happen, the transformer is actually can cause the fire safety issue, which is the trans uh, the mineral oil having very relatively low flash point, which is means means that it can easily to catch a fire, and even if if we can have a leak of the mineral oil, it can potentially start a fire. That's the reason, that, that's a key reason why this mineral oil is not favored uh, during this time. It's actually for the, now this. Okay. So, beside that, the stringent, we have a concern in terms of a stringent environmental protection regulation, which is the government try to encourage the 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 use uh, the user of the transformer to use uh, any liquid with a low toxic, toxicity and then the best or uh, not the, not the best uh, for the uh, for the baby the alternative of those mineral oil is actually we try to use the natural organic oil which is coming from the natural ester or we can say another uh, in in other words is we, we can use the vegetable oil or synthetic ester that's why when you look at here, there is a problem that we need to solve and we, we need to find the solutions. And most of the researchers around the world nowadays try to figure out what are the best of natural ester that we potentially substitute for the traditional mineral oil. So taking advantage as a Malaysian Taking the advantage of Malaysia as the second biggest palm oil producer in the world, the we can say that the resources is easily obtained because we have lots lots of palm oil plantation that can we can use to generate the palm oil. Then from here is actually make investigation process more easier for for us because we have lots of palm oil. Besides that, we can also uh, investigate in terms of uh, different kinds of vegetable oil, such as coconut oil, right? And also the rice bran oil. Rice bran oil is actually the oil produced from the husk of the, the oil. So why this particular uh, oil that interested uh, me to do the research is actually, the first one is this oil is non-toxic. Okay, because we eating the oil, okay, we use the oil to fry anything, so it's non-toxic. And then the second one is the high flash and uh, fire and flash point, which is very good in terms of fire and flash point. And also this oil is actually easily bio, uh, biodegradable as compared to mineral oil, meaning that we have environmental friendly oil to be used inside the country. Therefore, based on those advantages, it has made me interested to investigate uh, natural ester or to say the vegetable oil into in depth for looking at what are the good properties, what are the bad properties, or not the bad properties. What are the uh, what we can say is um, 
the lacking of the palm oil or this kind of oil compared to the normal. And from there we can, uh, one day we can, uh, one day we, we hope we can uh, overcome the lacking or the, what we get the lacking of the oil so that we can uh, improve the uh, the big oil to them and then we can use for transformer in the future. So the first part uh, of the investigation is actually we try to understand uh, or we try to investigate the first uh, two parameters which is non-toxicity, whether this uh, oil having higher flash fire and flash point and also the biodegradability. Okay, biodegradable. So first part what I did is actually we try to check the biodegradation rate when we compare to the natural ester, which is vegetable oil, and we have the synthetic ester and also the mineral oil. Okay, the natural ester or vegetable oil is actually can have hundred percent, almost ninety percent of biodegradation in fifteen days, as compared to mineral oil, even not less than ten percent of biodegradation rate occur for fifteen days. This is a very good uh, criteria that we can consider to replace the, the mineral oil in the future. The second one is a synthetic ester, which has a 75% of biodegradation as compared to a mineral oil. So, so biodegradability can be described as the ability of the insulation liquid to decay through the action of living organism. Okay, so this is a direct indication of how harmful a, a, a liquid is to the environment when it spill or is spilled or it can cannot be contained. Okay. So the second one is related to the ignition resistance of the uh, vegetable oil as compared to mineral mineral oil. So as you can see here, as you can see from the picture, mineral oil only took three minutes for fire to ignite as compared to natural ester. When you give the fire, even three minutes at 100 degrees C, still no fire being ignited. So that's quite interesting. There is still no ignition for uh, natural ester at 100 degrees C, and it tested until 70 minutes. We give and then give the temperature at that the temperature of 230 degrees C, and then the the fire still has not ignited for natural ester. This is a good characteristic, or this is the advantage of uh, natural ester. Whereby, as I mentioned earlier, loss of the transformer is located to the poly and near to the poly uh, populated area or congested area or inside the shopping mall and so on. When we use this kind of natural ester, even though the temperature is higher as higher as 250 degrees C, and then even we give the that particular temperature up to 70 minutes, there is still no ignition occur. This is a good for fire proof prevention. For that particular transformer. So, so next one is we look at that one is a ignition resistance. How good that particular oil to have a resistance for ignition. So the next one is the flash point, the flash and core properties of the uh, mineral oil. For this case, uh, I, 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 did, I did a study for palm oil and also the raspberry oil. And the flash point for mineral oil is around 100 degrees C, lower than palm oil and also raspberry oil, which is more than 250 degrees C. So the good thing is about the flash point is you need to hide it. For vegetable oil, you require very high temperatures in order to make that oil to flash that cause the fire. Okay. So based on the standard, and another important characteristic is a four point. Four point is 
how good the oil can uh, work uh, for for the environment cold for the colder environment for especially for the uh, cold country weather okay so based on this one vegetable oil having higher four point than mineral oil yes it's higher than uh, mineral oil which is it cannot operate and the temperature is lower than minus 37 degree because it, it's already become a solid all right <clears throat> so however based on the standard okay ASTM uh, D3487 standard spec specified for mineral oil the four point limit is minus 40 degree which is good for mineral oil and for vegetable oil is based on IEEE C57 uh, 147 okay for natural ester they are recommended for four point for this vegetable oil is must comply minimally minus 10 degrees C for vegetable oil and for our case we already surpassed the minimum value which is negative 20 centimeters and negative 33 which is very good for application inside the transformer so when we look at the three particular uh, three uh, important criteria or what the what, what from the result that we see before um, the vegetable 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 oil is actually surpass all the requirement the minimum requirement to be a transformer a liquid which is to have very good resistant fire second one uh, we have in terms of sorry uh, biodegradation okay and the last one is in terms of flash and four point so the main three criteria already passed by the all this vegetable oil so in order to uh, to be used in the transformer there are a few tests that we need to be carried out okay the first one we need to investigate how good in terms of the viscosity of the that particular transformer okay the second one is to check how much the moisture can obtain, can be retained inside the uh, the oil okay and the third one is a common uh, properties which is dielectric properties including the permittivity di dielectric distribution factor and also the resistivity this is a common test for any kind of the insulation material and the most two parts which is you must comply this ac breakdown voltage and also like heat pass voltage before you can use inside the transformer and also before you can uh, apply to the industry all right so we look, we look at the first one the viscosity test so the this is a study about the kinematic viscosity of three different oil, and then we have uh, for this study is we have a synthetic ester, okay, the uh, the brown color, and then we have a natural ester in green color, and also the mineral mineral ester uh, mineral oil in the blue color, and based on the standard, okay, the standard require that. Based on the IEEE standard 637 and also ASTM D3487, it, it, it's recommended that a kinematic viscosity for any liquid that needs to be used inside the transformer is at 40 degrees C. Okay, at 40 degrees C, is for mineral oil is 12 liter millimeters squared per second. Okay, that one is for milli, uh, for the mineral oil and for natural ester or natural ester including the city ester and also the natural ester they are recommended that the viscosity for this kind of oil is not more than 50 millimeters squared per second at 40 degrees C so based on this graph as you can see here uh, all the natural ester and also the uh, synthetic ester is actually uh, passed or surpassed the, the requirement by the standard which is 
not more than 50 millimeters squared per second. So, which is less than 50 millimeters squared per second. So, this is a very good science of which we, we can use for transformer. So, we can say that normally the ester which is boy is more because than mineral oil is a common. However, even though it's, uh, it's more because in terms of heat dissipation or heat removal from the winding, ester oil or vegetable oil normally can remove more heat as compared to mineral oil due to the viscosity of that particular oil. Then we look at the second one is about the moisture. Moisture saturation level inside the door. So if you in this area is very inside the uh, insulation area or it, it is well recognized or it, it is well known that moisture in oil has a detrimental effect or can make the transformer performance become worse if you have more moisture inside the transformer. <clears throat> because this moisture is actually will deteriorate your transformer insulation material which is either your oil or paper insulation and when it deteriorates your uh, insulation material of course it will deteriorate your electrical and also mechanical strength of that particular insulation <clears throat> so moisture uh, that's why you can say that one of the important parameter in the oil moisture measure, measurement is actually related to the water solubility or we can say the water saturation level inside the oil so when the moisture in the oil exceed at the solub uh, solubility uh, for that temperature okay, sorry, it will produce a free water inside the, the oil so when you have a free water inside the oil it is it will become the conductive part inside the insulation material in which it can make a breakdown of the voltage become easily okay so based on this study as you can see from the graph in terms of moisture saturation level as you can see here the natural ester can absorb more water than mineral oil in <clears throat> which is good thing in which it can prevent free water to form means when you have capability to absorb more moisture inside the oil without having uh, without exceed the solubility uh, point then the free water the, the free water will not uh, form in that particular oil so this very good things so when you have high water saturation level means that it will help to keep your cellulose oil the insulation material dry and of course when the insulation material is uh, of your transformer is dry it can extend your the life of the transformer especially the paper and also the press spot of the transformer right so more moisture absorbed uh, more moisture absorbed to dry insulation paper and also you have longer lifespan of your transformer okay Okay, the third test that the this one is a dielectric properties test. So any insulation material need to pass through the this uh, test, especially the dissipation factor. Okay, the dissipation the dissipation factor is the property that indicates how much energy is dissipated through the liquid as a heat. Okay, this property I I I. Uh, replace that. This is factor is the properties that indicate how much the energy is dissipated uh, through the liquid as a heat. Right. So this this distribution factors is actually measure how the efficient uh, the insulation liquids is and this is this one can be great indication of your contamination or deterioration of your liquid insulations. So means that when you have a lower power factor, not lower power factor, lower distribution factor, means that you have a better distribution material. So for this case, as you can see from the study, 
at 90 degrees C, the rice bran oil has a 0 0.02168 uh, dissolution factor, which is seven times larger than mineral oil. And whereas for palm oil, uh, the dissolution factor is seven times higher than mineral oil. But based on the requirement for the transformer liquid inflation, uh, based on IEC 60247, it's recommended that uh, the value of 0 0.05 dissolution factor for mineral oil and also for vegetable oil, it must be less than 0 0.05. So for in this case, even though uh, our vegetable oil is higher than mineral oil, but still much, much lower than the recommended value by the standard, which is 0 0.05. So, so this one is surpassed by the standard, all right? So why vegetable oil has distribution factor higher than uh, mineral oil. This is because the structure of the vegetable, the vegetable oil itself, where the uh, the structure, the molecular structure of the vegetable oil is having or is slightly more polar, means that more absorbing, okay, more effect to the to the uh, electric electric field as compared to mineral oil. That's why it it, it having higher distribution factor as compared to mineral oil. So the, the second dielectric uh, properties, which is related to the relative permittivity, and relative uh, permittivity is actually one of the important factors which show how the oil behaves in the electrical field, or in the simpler words, this relative permittivity will indicate how easy a material becomes polarized under the electric field. Okay? How the electric field will polarize that's represent the permittivity of any uh, material. So based on this study, well, we can, what we have is a little relative permittivity of oil sample, which we measure at, uh, using according to IEC 60247 at 30 degrees C. And what we have here for palm oil is around 2.176 and the rice bran oil is 1.901. The, even though the for vegetable oil, we having higher reactive permittivity, and what we suspect is actually from this uh, from this regard is actually the higher re uh, relative permittivity of vegetable oil is due to the structures, or uh, we can say the is due to the presence of triglycerides uh, tri tri molecule inside the vegetable oil, which is compared to different molecule as a mineral oil. So this type of grass right will attribute to the higher relative permittivity for uh, for the vegetable oil, which is have a polar in nature. Okay? Polar characteristic in nature for this particular transformer oil. So when we, when we compare to this one, all right, when we compare mineral oil and also the vegetable oil. Actually, the good things about the vegetable oil, uh, the relative permittivity is close to the uh, paper or solid insulation inside the transformer, which is uh, roughly around 4.0. So when you have nearer the value uh, with with the uh, solid insulation, meaning that you will have a, uh, even a stress distribution between solid and liquid material. As compared to uh, mineral oil, means that the stress, the electrical stress uh, experienced by the uh, solid insulation and liquid insulation will be even even a stress distribution when you use the palm uh, vegetable oil as compared to mineral oil. Means that in the mineral oil you will have higher stress as compared to vegetable oil. Okay, and the thickness of uh, the thickness of liquid gas and also uh, solid insulation are comparable as compared to uh, mineral oil. So the good things when you have very high relative permittivity is actually you can reduce the local stress, especially at the wages of the transformer winding. Okay, at the wages, 
Normally at the wages of the winding, normally we, you will have very high stress, electrical stress. So when you, when you have even, or you can, uh, for vegetable oil, which is have higher relative sensitivity, which is close to the insulation uh, material as compared to the oil, this will reduce the less at uh, the local stress at that particular area. So very good in terms of design transformer. Okay. So we can set at that particular particular area. We do not need to have very thick uh, insulation material, and then we can reduce the sizing of the transformer as well based on this this result. All right. Now we look at the. Uh, the resistivity, everyone is knows. The resist resistivity is another important electrical property, especially for insulation material. Okay, insulation uh, material, which normally the unit is given in tera ohms or ohms per centimeter. Ohms centimeter. So, any insulation material that very that have very high resistivity means that it's become a very good insulation material. So, insulating oil that has a very high resi resistivity normally indicates a low number of free ions and low concentration of conductive particles meaning that there is no much of the free ion inside the, the oil and also there is a low concentration of conductive particles inside the oil so the oil the resistivity as you know that it will increase it will decrease as the temperature increase as you can see from the the graph Okay, as you can see from here, the rice bran oil and also the palm oil having higher resistivity as compared to mineral oil. Okay, at 30 degrees C, based on the standard, so the rice bran oil having 6.372 tera ohm centimeter, which is two times higher than uh, mineral oil, which is around 3.042 tera ohm centimeter. So, for good insulating material, for good insulating liquid, resistivity not only perform at the low temperature, as, but you need to perform at the higher temperature as well. And for this case, both of the vegetable oil perform very well at the lower temperature as well as the higher temperature. So, the transformer, inside the transformer, the temperature is around between 60, can go up to 90, and sometimes can go up more than 100 degrees. So the the needs of having very good resistivity during that particular uh, temperature or part, uh, between the temperature range between 60 and 90 degrees is very good advantages for transformer applications. All right. So this one is very important test that you must pass before you can sell your uh, your own, okay. This is we call the AC breakdown voltage, in where we give the AC supply or AC stress to the oil at a certain gap distance. And for the standard, normally we give the the gap between two electrodes is around two point five mm by the standard. And then in this particular particular study, we we'll in we will inject the voltage around two kV per step. I mean two kV for every second or every step okay you increase to kv if no breakdown occur you increase again to kv until the breakdown occur then that particular voltage is actually we can call the ac breakdown voltage right so normally for this kind of testing we will uh, we will do um, uh, almost 50 readings of the breakdown for each sample. Okay. So based on the study that we did, is actually so we have two kind of sets. One is using the automatic bulb oil tester, and also we use uh, the high voltage lab setting in uh, UPNM, and then we come up with the average voltage for that particular testing and then what we can see here is the minimum 
uh, breakdown voltage of unused mineral oil, which is new oil uh, for the transformer, based on IEC 60157-156, is you need to have 70 kV per 2.5 millimeter gap that you apply for the electrode. <coughs> and then from this study, what we can see here <coughs> on the table, the mineral oil, okay, by using the uh, bow tester, which is more higher than high voltage lag, due, uh, due to a few reasons. One of the reasons is uh, when you're using the bow tester, normally they have uh, the stirrer at the bottom of the test cell, and for high voltage, normally we don't uh, use the stirrer. So that's the reason. When you use the, when you use the stirrer, normally the the uniform the the black carbon or after the breakdown, uh, the the carbonized of the oil will disperse uh, in the area of the electrode as compared to uh, high voltage net. So based on the result that we have, okay, and what we can see here. Both of the testing using the bow of tester, but and so either using the high voltage laboratory. What we can see here, the rice bran oil performed very well for both tests. Okay, the first one you can get around 93 kV for 25 2.5 mm, and another one is 88.79 kV uh, for 2.5 mm. And what we can see here, all the oil pass the standard, uh, the requirement by the standard, which is more than 30 kV per mm, as you can see here. So, meaning is that, based on this result, the vegetable oil shows some promising result in terms of the, in terms of the AC breakdown voltage, and then it surpassed the, the standard and also uh, better than mineral oil in this study. And Another important uh, study that you need to be done before you can confirm whether this kind of oil can be used inside the transformer is a lightning impulse breakdown test. It's actually to replicate the lightning strike uh, that we have in the real world. So the standard lightning impulse that we apply in this study is 1.2 microsecond with a 50 microsecond. 1.2 is a rate rise time and 50 microsecond is a tail time. So we have a positive and negative polarity, which is uh, represent the lightning strike to the earth. Okay, normally the majority of the lightning strike to the earth is a negative polarities. Okay, polarities. And we can use uh, the high speed uh, imaging technique to see the stream of propagation inside the the test cell, which is uh, the the most uh, the important things about uh, study the the streamers is actually. We try to understand how fast the electron move or the streamer move from the positive electron to the ground so that we can uh, we can see uh, the electron will uh, move faster in what kind of oil all right so normally we are two type of tests for the lightning and then we can have a uniform field which in which we use a sphere to sphere electrode to represent the uniform electric field and then we can have a point to plane to represent non-uniform electric field so in our lab is actually we have eight stages uh, in pass generator which can generate more than 800 kV in pass uh, uh, in pass uh, shape as in, in pass uh, breakdown voltage Right, this is the result that we uh, obtained during the testing. It's quite interesting. Okay, based on the result, we can see that all the mineral oil at a different gap distance, okay, we compared to AC gap distance, which is normally 2.5 mm. For lightning impulse, we can uh, increase the voltage between 3.8 and 6, 6.0 mm gap distance. And then what we can see from the graph is actually mineral oil perform very good in terms of lightning strike okay they're having the highest uh, breakdown voltage for all the gap distance followed by the palm oil and, and followed by the right bank oil and the palm oil so as you can see from, from the result 
sorry, this one is for uniform fame. The difference of 50 breakdown, which is the average breakdown voltage of PO and uh, vegetable oil with the mineral oil is less than 30%, which is reasonable in terms of design of the transformer. So the reason why when we do the streamer study, we we understand why the vegetable oil having lower breakdown voltage is due to the stream of propagation in the vegetable oil is actually higher than stream of propagation inside the mineral oil. Meaning that the electrons move faster inside the vegetable, vegetable oil as compared to mineral oil and hence it can reduce the breakdown of the uh, breakdown voltage of that particular oil. That's why as you can see from the result, mineral oil having higher breakdown voltage as compared to vegetable oil. And under non uh, electric field or non uniform field, so the similar result, uh, we can see the pattern is similar in which the mineral oil having the highest breakdown voltage, followed by the uh, rice bran oil and also the, <coughs> the palm oil at a different gap distance. And what, what are interesting here is actually the lightning impulse performance of the oil sample, uh, you can see the, the right uh, from the curve here or the graph here is slightly different at a small gap distance okay however this uh, the difference become larger as the gap distance increases which is can go up to 35 or 33.62 percent larger as compared to the smaller part so <clears throat> this this quite interesting finding where what we can say here is actually due to the fast trimmer appearing at the breakdown voltage level and then because of the fast trimmer it's actually take control over the breakdown where the gap distance is increased at a shorter gap okay it's a shorter gap the streamer uh, is actually not control the breakdown of the voltage However, when you have a bigger gap, the streamer is actually take over the breakdown voltage and become they control the uh, the breakdown voltage, which start to start to control the breakdown when the gap is increased. Actually, the streamer will influence at larger gap distance. So, why why do we need to have a small gap and larger gap? It's actually inside the transformer there is a different uh, gap distance that appear inside the transformer. Some places you can get very small gap distance. Some parts between the tank and also the windy can, can we, we can have a larger gap distance, which maybe can around to 15 mm or larger. That's why we need to study at smaller gap distance and also the high, uh, larger gap distance to cover all the uh, area inside the, the, the transformer. <clears throat> However, even though the, the gap is quite big at the larger gap distance, uh, it's still reasonable, it's not uh, take go for 33% and this result is actually uh, is in line with the other result uh, in the similar for different kind of vegetable oil. Right, that's all the result that we have for the quick installation and the form, this is the real uh, transformer that used Synthetic ester and also natural ester. One is uh, in UK, they use for synthetic ester using a 400 PV 240 MBA transformer and located at the North London. And then we have another one using uh, soybean oil uh, in Germany. They use for 300 PV 300 MBA transformer. So it's actually different kind of oil have been used inside the transformer. <clears throat> This particular oil is based on soybean oil, and for palm oil base is still in is still in investigation because they are not the main producer for the palm oil. That's why they are interested in soybean. So maybe in the future we can try to have a prototype to use fully palm oil inside our transformer to be tested in the real condition. All right. So. What I can conclude, uh, conclude from the liquid insulation study is actually 
what we can say the first one the, the breakdown the AC breakdown in the uniform field of the vegetable oil is actually comparable with the mineral oil means that it's comparable means the difference is not so much so in terms of design operation designs stress <coughs> so basic size and configuration of vegetable oil uh, field transformer can be similar to the mineral oil field unit means that we can design similar size of the transformer which is which is currently used mineral oil okay we can use the similar size in terms of aligning in power breakdown voltage the vegetable oil liquid are lower than mineral oil yes you can see from the result especially in non-uniform electric field and the difference is increased at the larger gap especially so what we can suggest is the design modifications such as we need to divide large gap large uh, oil gap into a smaller oil gap so that we do uh, especially the, at the near winding end in the uh, when you're using the easter field power transform so you need you need to redesign or you need to do some modification in your design especially uh, in the area where you have a larger gap distance you have to make it a smaller gap distance at the inside the in larger gap area so that you can have very small uh, breakdown voltage as compared to larger gap distance that's the recommendation when <coughs> in terms of a lightning breakdown lightning impulse breakdown voltage okay so in terms of dielectric permittivity uh, we can say that the vegetable oil is higher than the mineral oil which is could provide a better electrical electric stress and okay, distribution between oil and pressure that i see mentioned here so means that when you have better electric stress meaning uh, you you will have even uh, electric stress between oil and response in terms of viscosity <coughs> yes a uh, viscosity of liquid uh, vegetable oil is higher than mineral oil which require elevated temperature to reach the same press spot if speed means that when you want to use the vegetable oil you need to increase the temperature so that when you impregnated the press spot so uh, so that the speed of impregnation uh, process of the press board will be similar to the mineral oil. So, <clears throat> so in terms of <coughs> coal starting, okay, when using this uh, at the coal country, so we must should be taken care as uh, when you use the vegetable oil field transformer, is due to high pore points of the niche of the vegetable oil. So you need to have a special uh, requirement okay for this to be used in the cold weather of the platform all right this is the first part and then we go for the second part is it's going to be free okay this part is actually regarding to the <coughs> solid insulation or you can call this electrical insulation paper so in this study is actually i tried to develop new kind of uh, insulation paper which is from a kernel fiber for power transformer application so for your information okay insulation press paper or insulation paper inside the transformer press press board or press paper is made is generally made from the soft food part soft food parts and this soft wood uh, part is actually been used uh, for several years decades already maybe in the beginnings of the transformer so and this insulation paper is not only be used to wrap the copper uh, conductor it's also be used as a support of the winding as you can see here this here is actually the paper insulation and this this is press board it gives the support for the winding of the transformer right Okay, what's the problem? Is what is the real problem? Why you, why we need to have a different kind of insulation material? It's actually is related to the with the rapid development of the power industry in the world currently, and the demand for the cellulite insulation continue to grow. Actually, the the demand for the soft food that required to make a paper insulation is is continue to grow, and so this one is actually actually leading to the bigger challenge 
related to the lack of softwood part, especially the southern pine. Okay? So you need a special the northern uh, atmosphere, which is called the southern pine. And beside that, as we know that the when you produce the paper insulation, it is require bus of the three consumptions. And this bus three consumption normally can cause uh, the forest to deplete and also it can damage our environment. These two problems is actually triggered. The people try to, to find an alternative uh, way to produce the paper insulation, not only the paper, but also the paper insulation. Right. So the solution is actually to solve the problem uh, of lacking the soft wood supply. Normally we can use the non-wood uh, raw material and this one actually have been used in the paper industry, non-wood material. It's not wood, but it's, it's kind of a, a plant that can be used for paper industry. So one of the non-wood uh, material, what you can see here is a, okay. Uh, non-wood material is uh, one of the non-wood that suitable for us is actually Knaf. Knaf is a Malaysia third crop after palm oil and also the rubber, which is intro introduced in 2010. Okay, okay, this is a good thing. I can go uh, for well quick. So <clears throat> we have a national Knaf of tobacco that allocate 5,000 hectare to cultivate the Knaf, and then we have the, the government is actually try to have the industrial enough industry to have a great potential to be developed as a new economic source based on our previous uh, minister so why knaf knaf is actually a very good plan because it can grow rapidly within 150 days can reach to track to 80 weeks as compared to the southern pine that we used to uh, to produce the the, the paper insulation uh, previously we require 40 to 7 years uh, 40 to 70 years before it can be harvested and the second one is the kunaf can harvest, can give uh, very high fibers, can approximately three to five times as compared to southern pine. Okay. And in terms of economic perspective, when you're using the kunaf plant, you require less chemical, less heat, and time because kunaf contains less lignin, which is normally lignin is we need to remove from paper uh, making process. So Knaf got a uh, have a nine percent of like uh, lignin, and compared to southern pine is thirty nine percent of lignin. And the last part, why Knaf is so important and so uh, to be used as a paper insulation paper, is easily pulp and bleach with the uh, harmless uh, chemicals such as hydrogen peroxide, which is normally used for uh, southern pine uh, type of plant. So. At present, there is no studies conducted, especially to investigate the suitability of kernel fiber as electrical grade insulation. So most because most of the paper produced from the kernels is actually for the alternative insulation and also the packaging box. Never have been tried to produce the electrical grade insulation insulation paper from the paper, from the kernel. Alright, so this is a process uh, of kernel puffing. This is the, the way that we produce actually. Uh, I, I, I don't want to go into detail. This is a process. We go chipping, popping, washing, and also cleaning, uh, drying, and also beating and to refine the fiber. And the popping process is actually we can have a mechanical popping, which is using a mechanical to, to pop, or you can use the chemical popping. For my study, actually, we do the chemical popping, which is soda popping, not the craft popping. Craft popping is quite expensive. However, the industry using the craft popping technique. To produce large amount of paper insulation, which is the craft popping give you more uh, in terms of mechanical strength as compared to soda popping. All right, so this is hand uh, preparation, uh, hand sheet preparation, which is from this uh, process you can produce the paper insulation. Okay, uh, so I can skip this one, try to make it as uh, simple as possible. If if you want to have my slide in this, I will give you later. <coughs> So the drying process and then this is the critical part after you finish uh, develop your own uh, paper insulation you need to do some performance tests okay the 
the first one is actually to check the chemical properties uh, for that particular paper that we produce and then we go we go and check the physical properties with the present and then we the most important thing is to have a very good paper inspection you need to have very high tensile strength so we do the testing we do the, uh, the test for mechanical tensile strength and then of course it's related to electrical performance similar like a uh, oil we need to, to have we need to test the ac dc and also impulse breakdown voltage for new kind of uh, breakdown uh, new kind of insulation paper and the last part and the most important part is the ag performance especially for the longer terms or longer period for application inside the transformer so the first one uh, in terms of the Fourier transform uh, transform the private spectral FTIR, what we can see from the result is actually in terms of uh, waveform uh, okay in terms of absorbent there is no difference between the craft paper and also the knuff paper which is here KP0 is mean zero beating, okay, the peak uh, beating of the uh, fiber and 40,000 is 8,000 beating. <clears throat> okay, in terms of the only difference is we have two different peaks. Uh, this one is related to chemical structure. We have two peaks assigned to OS stretching and also CO stretching. Okay, so there is no obvious uh, difference except the peak at 2970 uh, is signed to CS stretching and OS bend, uh, bending mode at 1631. This is due to water absorbed from the cellulose. Okay. So there is no different, much different in terms of uh, shifted wave number when we compare the craft and also the craft fiber. So in terms of morphology of relation using the PSAM, so the, the surface morphology of craft paper uh, in the left side and also the surface morphology of the craft insulation paper at 8,000 BT, you can see it's almost similar pattern. Uh, whereas uh, in the craft, uh, you can see some void as compared to pack, compact uh, part of the insulation uh, from the craft. So in terms of, sorry, Right, in terms of tensile strength, uh, as compared knuff and craft, the requirement standard uh, standard requirement uh, to be the insulation paper is actually between 45 megapascal. And then from our test, what surprising is we 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 achieve 65 megapascal for knuff and Craft paper is 51.6 megapascal, which is surpassed the standard. It's quite a uh, promising result for this one. And then for in terms of AC breakdown voltage, and the standard requirement, similar like the liquid, is 30 kV per mm. And then both Knuff and Craft paper perform uh, beyond this, uh, the requirement by the standard, which is 47.7, 46.96, which is almost equal in terms of performance. So conclusion that I can make from the initial study of the electrical insulation paper, we, we, we do some study yet, uh, still ongoing study in this area. So what we can say that uh, we can transform the transformer to a more environmental friendly transformer by replacing mineral oil with the vegetable oil. Okay? Especially in our study, we can replace either using the palm oil or raspberry oil. And also we can replace the soft food fiber with the kernel fiber, which is cost effective in terms of uh, compared to the softwood. So we can also have, actually we can boost the uses of palm oil and as well as a knuff plant indirectly, which could help the farmer to generate more income, which is we can produce high value product from the knuff, high value product from the palm oil as compared as, as currently used, okay? And this is, I just want to show about the market uh, potential. It is expected by 2022, uh, the market for the transformer market is 35 billion in the world, okay, and the global distribution transformer market is around 15.4 billion in 2023. There is quite big uh, 
area to be grow okay for for the transformer market and then this is the price that we can get okay and when you compare the kena fiber and also softwood pulp fiber this around for kena is around 500 ringgit per ton and for softwood is around 3000 per ton so this will reflect the cost of the paper that we will produce later on okay it means that kena fiber will produce less uh, uh, less cost in terms of price which is have a similar performance as compared uh, compared to softwood part funder and then this is market potential we have a local transformer manufacturer we have a multinational transformer we have the msgv we also in we have obviously transformer manufacturer we have arriva we have hyundai electricity and hyundai electric and also the Siemen. and then beside that we can use especially for paper insulation and also oil insulation inside the power capacitor manufacturer and also power cable manufacturer so this is my team members that who works in this area uh, for palm oil and also the uh, uh, transformer insulation material uh, solid insulation material we have dr tema dr akila and dr martia and also dr sabrina uh, who investigate the nanoparticle inside the uh, the nano clip for transformer application and the rest uh, is my PhD student and also my master student my master student which uh, currently doing uh, in this project all right okay so we have uh, actually we have a research group in terms of high voltage engineering and also sustainable energy so we divided this group into one group is doing the high voltage part and another group, uh, another group is uh, sustainable energy which include our latest uh, not the latest our uh, project which we are in the final phase to develop uh, wave energy converter prototype uh, the prototype of the wave energy converter for Malaysia condition and we will uh, deploy the wave energy converter at somewhere in Kuantan Port uh, maybe end of this year for this project is funded by uh, before it is a MOSFI now it's a uh, MASTEC okay before uh, before this MASTEC and then uh, now this is uh, we call Kesa. Okay, new. All right. So thank you very much. I hope if you have any questions to ask, then ask me or you can email me. Thank you very much.